right. So thank you very much for the lively chat. I think it was uh, very informing. Um, so now I just want to say to the crowd that you are actually very lucky because it so happened that this is an ICP lab week. So ICP lab is an event that we have several times per year where we bring the most promising startups from our projects from our ecosystem. We bring them to, to Zurich to interact both with the Definity Foundation and to interact with each other. Um, this being said, we are giving them the opportunity to present themselves in front of you. So we will start right now with Michael from Shiku. So the metaverse is already here. There's over 300 million people today that are living uh, more than 10 hours a month in these uh, virtual worlds, open metaverses. So it's definitely not dead as some headlines claim. It's very much alive and people are building and there's over $30 billion of economic activity already happening like Dominic Williams explained in these new economies based on property rights. And we strongly believe that AI and generative AI will now accelerate the realization of these virtual metaverse, open metaverse worlds and that we're kind of at an inflection point now. As he was saying, uh, the problem with today's virtual worlds like these Minecrafts and uh, Robloxes, they're totally Web2 based, siloed, closed. Uh, they're not based on blockchain. And so we believe that the future version of the internet is one with an open metaverse where uh, you have Web3 underlying these metaverses. And that's what we're building. So Shiku is in, is in uh, we're building the first, the world's first, let's say, open and decentralized full feature metaverse platform that combines the Web3 components, the generative AI, and decentralized identities. And we are a foundation here in Switzerland, a nonprofit foundation, the first one for a metaverse. Took a while to convince the Swiss financial authorities, but it's now fully compliant and legal and regulated. And we are operating here out of Zurich. Hi. So how do we differentiate ourselves from these that you've maybe heard of, Decentraland, uh, Horizon Worlds from Meta, Roblox, the Sandbox, mainly because we're combining the Web3 component with the generative AI, the decentralized identities, and multi-chain. This is the main, main differentiators. And we have a, an established business model with several revenue streams, a uh, token burden program, a very well-designed governance system, and uh, a Shiku treasury, which is from the foundation. Uh, how do we attract users? B2B2C marketing strategy, which means we find niche subcultures, customers, brands, I mean, brands and companies and creators that already have users. And they, we bring, let them bring their own customers and users into our world where we offer them a new experience, a more sticky experience. Our team is based uh, here in Zurich and Shanghai, mainly from people from ex big gaming companies. Uh, top tier management consulting companies and the developer team is mainly in Shanghai because you can scale here, uh, you can scale there. And our founder is a tokenomics expert. He's designed the tokenomics and governance systems. So uh, that's very well taken care of. He's also a senior economic advisor at Chainlink. Uh, we're also raising funds, seed round, no pre-seed. Uh, we have a 6 million round going on now where we've raised, raised 3 million so far. And the tokenomics distribution is very well designed and has its Veskin schedules, which I can give more information uh, separately. Uh, oops. Some highlights until now. So we've set up a foundation. We've sold first lands. Uh, we have partnerships with top metaverse builders. We've launched first subworlds, even one with an artist that was presented in our Basel. Uh, we have uh, collaborations with uh, universities for a metaversity. We've launched a worldwide architecture competition for Inchiku and have been uh, presenting at uh, large uh, international conferences and have received two grants from Definity. So in Shiku, you can imagine, you can uh, create and you can own anything you want, all powered by the internet computer. Thank you. Um, yeah, so basically I'm one of the co-founders of Dragons and I'm trying to get this slide to work, there we go, all right. Um, so Dragons is a small team, but we are very international. We have um, teams in Asia, Europe, and the US. 
Um, we have a wide amount of experience uh, creating games, basically, um, right from the origins of Bullfrog, which is you know a legendary PC game studio, uh, all the way up to um, Monopoly Go, which is a very popular mobile game app. Um, so yeah, basically our team has extensive experience in PC, in console, in web, and in mobile. And most importantly, we have all developed and shipped multiple games for decades. Oops. Right, so um, back in 2012, myself and Adam, um, we decided that we really wanted to make a free-to-play MMO. Um, at the time, the technology wasn't really there, but we came up with the, the foundation, which is the, the concept that is Dragons. Um, the original idea came from even further back. It's been something that's been brewing in Adam's head since he went on a childhood holiday to Mallorca and visited the Caves of Drax. Um, so the, the aim with Dragons is to create an open-ended MMO. Um, I guess if any of you have played Breath of the Wild, um, you know, the, the fact that you can explore, you're not limited to a, a linear quest chain, you can basically play your own way. Um, with dragons, everyone has to hatch an egg and raise that dragon up to a certain level. But beyond that, uh, the players can do whatever they want. They can have the most powerful dragons, they can be an evil sorceress, they can grow the biggest cabbages. They can uh, be a mighty warrior or a, a world-renowned shopkeeper. Um, in the game, you will also be able to perfect your trade skills to create um, very rare items, which can then be converted to NFTs and sold to other players. So um, at Dragons, well, the founders of Dragons are very big fans of the internet computer. We've been following it since 2017, and we truly believe in the, the vision of a truly trustless uh, environment. Um, there's a really long list of why the internet computer is perfect for the development of games. Um, but to put it very simply, if there was no internet computer, it would be impossible for us to make Dragons. Um, Dragons is 100% on-chain. That means the entire ORM, the, all the data models, the assets CDN are all decentralized and running on the internet computer. Um, as this was already mentioned by Dominic, this uh, frees the dependencies that uh, people traditionally have on cloud services and uh, basically makes us immune to any policy changes or any kind of um, corporate decisions that would be out of our control. This is something that has actually affected us in the past. So, you know, it's uh, definitely something that is, is worth uh, paying attention to. Um, we use uh, internet identity for the authentication. There's no uh, sign up form. We don't need to know any personal information about the player. We just need to know that this is a particular player and that is it. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the, in, the concept of internet identity and how it's uh, very safe for users. Um, it's pretty much immune to hacking, phishing, password scams, etc. cetera. Um, so um, I guess, I know. So basically the internet computer is amazing. It can scale to exactly what we need it to. Um, so at Dragons, we did a kind of not so hostile takeover of the NS NSS1 token, um, which basically enabled us to have a, a live token, which we can use for our governance. Um, we didn't want to do a fundraise and the SNS1 was essentially a blank slate test token. Um, we're making a hybrid DAO, which we can explain more at our desk because I'm running out of time. Um, but, um, yeah, it's an interesting concept and uh, it's actually not for profit, most importantly. If you want to stay up to date with the progress of Dragons, then you can follow us on our website, on our Discord, on Twitter and on OpenChat. Um, I, we also frequently blog on uh, Nuance, so uh, you can stay up to date there as well. Okay, anyway, thank you. <laughs>
Okay, so hello, I'm Sam and this is Joey. And we want to introduce Bitbox, which we think is a next stage of the natural development of Cubetopia, which is what uh, Dominic was just mentioning earlier. So we sort of, now we've been in the, the year, like the year we've had since uh, Cubetopia released, we've learned a few things on the, on the way. We feel like a lot of the metaverse products we've seen since then uh, have a lot of style, but very little substance in terms of gameplay. You know, empty, very empty worlds, low engagement to players. You know, so there's there's not people sticking in and with it, and and as well as compared to uh, there's a barrier to entry in terms of owning an NFT to play the game, and that's a very self limiting size and grow to. That barrier to entry also exists in a different sort of sense in Web two games, where you might need an account, download the game. Uh, verification, all these sort of things, which I'll cover on in a second. Um, and the, the, the creation is not balanced in, the tools aren't balanced in favor of the creator on Web 2 as well, which is why we thought we had to be on Web 3. So here, what we just want to show is that traditionally Web 3 games that we're seeing, you need an NFT to play generally a lot of them. And you're limiting sort of the size of your player base to the amount of people who own those NFTs. So there's no real natural space to grow there. Whereas what we believe should be the thing is that you might have NFT functionality attached to your game, but primarily it's for engagement with a mass market. Anyone can come and engage with the game and play with the game. Uh, and this why over Web2 is that Web2, say we wanted to play a game of like Counter-Strike together, we'd have to go find a device that's compatible. We'd have to go download the software. Uh, create accounts on something like Steam, download the game, and then play the game, which if you're wanting to drop, play something very quickly, it's uh, yeah not ideal to do that. Okay. And our solution was coming up with Bitbox. So uh, another lo-fi box arcade built on the sort of functionality that we had with Cubetopia, but then extending it to build uh, mini games, fun activities in there, which are going to be hyper accessible. You just share a link. Our view is, you know, if, if you just say you're in a, a Teams meeting and you've got a 20 minutes to spare at the end, you could just drop a link, play it all together uh, and have no requirement to be instantly in the game and play instantly. Yeah. Okay. And go to the next one. So here we've got uh, some samples of what we've built in the game. So you can see we've got avatar systems, which are customizable. Uh, can build them how you want and with the potential to introduce creators to them. We had this as well, which was meant to showcase the, uh, that's the way we should give that. Uh, we had to showcase the uh, the speed of loading the game. Unfortunately, it is a static image. So should be animated. yeah, but, uh, you can check on the website, which we'll give you a link to in a second to load up the game. In terms of tech, which we're running on here, is that uh, we were initially building Cubetopia on Unity uh, but we stepped back when we realized we were essentially building a lot of the functionality from scratch. So we've moved on to build it into uh, uh, our own uh, custom game engine built, you know, building for the web using purely uh, web-based tools. So uh, Joey's the expert here, so uh, you know, I might be getting it slightly incorrect. Uh, so as a result... As a result, uh, we found that it's uh, a lot faster to use than something like Unity. It loads up uh, straight away, and uh, it's also compatible on mobile. Yeah, uh, so what we wanted to be with this product is not to have uh, a product whose USP selling point was that it was built on Web3, rather than it's a good product, fun to use uh, to get there. Something no downloads required, no me and Joey aren't going to lock you out of your account. You know, you can play it as you want and no sort of requirements. And to highlight this, we're just wondering if anyone's got a phone on them right now, uh, you can just go on bitbox.gg. It should load up pretty quickly. Uh, you can try out the game, see how quickly it loads uh, and test out the functionality. And that's the sort of platform then from then on will add more money, mini games and activities to play. Uh, sort of the functionality that Dominic was mentioning where you could promote to others. Yeah. But yeah, so the main the main key point here that we're trying to drive is that uh, it's so accessible. Hopefully you guys, if you've got your phone and you've got two minutes, uh, just pull it up, type in bitbox.gg and you'll see that straight away 
you're in the world and that's how we think that we can spread to a mass market and uh you know spread like a meme through networks like discord colleges workplaces etc yeah thank you for the intro um so a bit about us i mean we are coming more from a very kind of like technical background if you uh, use one of these uh, hardware wallets you probably are using our firmware we write like firmware for many of the uh, top uh, one chains uh, we also have like kind of like projects in in the area of like protocol engineering or, or the infrastructure uh, but most recently we started to move a bit more from this consulting for big chains into also building some uh, kind of like riskier uh, projects internally um, particularly choosing the chains that we like the most and obviously this is one of those and um, so our IPCP journey started mostly with like hardware wallet integration, like integrating the wallets into Ledger Live and other things like that. Uh, we also run infrastructure on-prem in Zurich. So we run nodes and most recently, as I said, we are starting to do some projects that involve like ICP actually, like kind of like more on the kind of like user facing uh, products. Um, there are two things that we are like building at the moment or, or we actually, one with release is um, client to connect from uh, to connect from C++ to ICP. It sounds pretty technical, but you will see why that's important. And the other thing that we are building right now is a bit out of the normal metaverse topic, but uh, there is also a kind of like zero lining to what uh, Don was saying about know, like AWS and trying to people like trying people to move out of, of kind of standard cloud providers into uh, kind of decentralized environment where you have like, I know, a decentralized security model. So um, why C, C++ client is important. So the, the main kind of like topic here is Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine is one of the kind of like uh, top engines for gaming, particularly used by uh, AAA games, which is like kind of a different layer, but typically it's hard to kind of like integrate with C++, but this also brings a lot of other opportunities. Like for example, connecting things to robotics with ROS, which is a standard kind of like for robotics uh, in the market and also for automotive. So if you want to have like something that is not only in the metaverse, but is linking to robotics or also linking link somehow to automotive, C++ is kind of like necessary. And, and now we have the SDK to do that. So ICP can be connected also almost natively there. The other thing that we are doing, which is kind of like somehow related, um, but it's something that we are like very passionate about is that at the moment, if you are in the cloud and you're running things like Kubernetes, which is a kind of like normal standard for everyone like in the cloud space, um, secret management at scale is really complex. I mean, we are thinking about like password managers when you say, okay, I'm going to store the password as a human, but actually like services have cross passwords between them, which is like quite complex. And then that goes at scale. And then you have like issues like rotation and things like that. ICP is very interesting from the point of view of cryptography because it has like some advantages that we can like leverage. And what we are building is a way to reach Kubernetes and delegate the cryptography, not the cryptography, the security of Kubernetes and all the secret management uh, to ICP. Uh, how that can be used, it obviously, there, there are situations where you have to kind of like maybe some projects start in AWS and they need to migrate. This, they think it's kind of like a, a initial bridge also in that direction. So we are mainly like kind of builders building integrations between things and we think that icp is one of the things that is going to use in the future so we are like betting on that too so it was very brief i think i got like some more minutes for them to catch up but if, if you're interested i mean we are like some around and yeah <laughs> thank you very much uh, i'm really excited to be here to show you what i've been working on and i have big plans i'm going to try and get this into five minutes maybe six minutes uh so, uh, <laughs> uh, so um, the name of this project is Island Collective Virtual Reality. Um, the, the problem as I see it is one and a half fold. Um, I, I, I'm a developer, I spend a lot of time in front of a screen. I'm very conscious of the fact that they're very flat and I don't like that. Um, not only is it a lack of physical dimensionality, but I think that also the internet lacks context. It lacks the depth of context for, for the for the things that we do there. And I think it laps, lacks a depth of expression as well. Um, if you if you notice, I, I like to talk with my hands, I'm holding two things, but uh, it, I think when, you, when you're communicating on a flat screen, that's, that's a very difficult thing to, to communicate, some of the extra kind of physical presence. Um, the second problem that's not really a problem is that there's a lack of technology readiness uh, for VR development on the web. 
uh, and there's a lack of trust in the platforms. Um, I think this is partly an opportunity. I, I think both of those things have in part been solved. Um, and I'm gonna try and show you why. Um, the, the solution that I'm proposing is open source. It's self-hosted, so there's no uh, hosting providers. It's just the IC. Um, it has an innovative tokenomic model that I'm going to try and explain very, very quickly. Um, it has an open, which is largely based around a kind of open profit model around the business. Um, the, the experiences themselves are uh, high fidelity and performant, and you can see some examples there. Um, my ultimate goal is to take away complexity from businesses and developers. Uh, the market is very much a blue ocean. We're going to see 40% year on year growth in, since I'm targeting a kind of enterprise market. Uh, these are, I think, probably three of the key areas that I want to look at, which is training, education, content creation, and all of them are projected to grow at 40%. So it's, uh, it's really a situation of create, don't compete. Uh, why aren't people doing it? Uh, this is a 2020 report. Um, a, a lack of good content. Uh, the user experience isn't there yet. So I think those are the things I really want to focus on. Um, this is uh, what's been built uh, with many thanks to Definity for, for the grants that they provided. Uh, uh, four spaces have been built, each with its own uh, kind of demonstration of different features uh, and, and different kind of vibe that you can get. Uh, this was actually the Island Club. Uh, this is a pool table uh, streaming uh, MP3s from the jukebox. Uh, each of these queues has a different weight, by the way. Um, so uh, the business model I'm proposing has two parts. I'm really going to focus on the island enterprise here because that's uh, what I see as the investment vehicle and also the revenue generating um, element here. Uh, the island foundation is a not-for-profit kind of community-driven um, entity. Uh, I'm happy to describe more of that later. Um, connecting these things is a token, Carib Island token. Uh, Carib uh, in the Indian numbering system uh, represents 100 billion. Uh, the token contains 100 billion cycles, and this is extremely important. The raw material I'm working with here is, is cycles. This is a way for um, uh, cycles to take a, an additional value. So around the, the raw material, which is the, the internet computer cycle, which is the, the unit of compute, uh, I want to add uh, the value add, which is immersive functionality. And, and that's uh, not only where the revenue comes from, it's where the utility stands as well. The interesting thing about this token is that it represents an open source profit model. Uh, the business does not determine the price of the asset. The utility of the asset determines the price of the asset. And that's the algorithm is something I will talk about now. Um, it, um, so the, the asset is sold for a, a price set by the, a, a combination of these kind of pretty simple metrics. How much has been bought, how much has been then used on the network for compute, how much has been sent as gifts. So there's an element here of bringing in a gift-based economy that I, I'm happy to talk more about, and the overall level of participation. So this is all about network effects, information theoretic quantities. This is the algorithm. Uh, none of the parts are especially complicated, uh, but the, the main point here is that the algorithm is public, anyone can see it, so if you are intending to buy the asset now or later, depending on the metrics that you would estimate, then you could actually make a prediction of what it might be worth. The roadmap, uh, I think about 18 months to build out the kind of the various parts that are needed in order to get this thing into a kind of uh, first network state that's really up and running and, and not only is generating revenue, but is also useful for people. Um, some of this happens in series, some in parallel. Uh, and the KPIs really come back to the same metrics uh, that, ooh, excuse me, the same metrics uh, that I was talking about here. Uh, the, these are really the KPIs as well. Yep. Um, as, as soon as funding arrives. Yeah. Uh, so the vision is mine. Um, uh, I have uh, all sorts of experience in my life. I've done many things. Uh, most recently, I've submitted a PhD, which is around performance augmentation. This is the title. It's immersive technology for workplace training. So this is something I've been working on for several years. Um, the, uh, the proposed structure, um, it will be a leadership team of three, uh, myself, the CTO, uh, and then there'll be a small team of developers. I, I expect uh, somewhere between three and five full-time equivalents in order to build this out over 18 months, depending on expertise. Uh, I have a number of academic connections. Uh, I would look for uh, developers as well in the UK who are more expensive and Zimbabwe and China who are undervalued. Um, 
I think the Internet Computer uh, and Definity can provide an excellent resource, especially in terms of Motoko Bootcamp graduates, who I've heard very good things about. Finally, the fundraising, this is a seed round. Uh, I, I do believe in, in lean development. Uh, I'm seeking to raise uh, a million euros uh, for this period. And um, this is roughly how it will be spent. Um, uh, obviously, the majority goes into uh, paying the team. Um, and there's a, a fairly standard split there. The, the revenue, uh, last thing I'd say, the revenue uh, really can start to be accrued from day one. This is something I think this tokenomic model will allow for is that, that, that you can really get that in quite early and it will ramp up not rapidly, but consistently according to the number of canisters in the network and how much compute they're doing. Uh, finally, yeah, I would also offer des de design and development services, me and the team in order to do that. Okay, and that's all I have for you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So this is a game, it's a strategy game. Uh, it's about spaceships. And it goes around the world that the universe is collapsing into a black hole that it's called the, rack, the Dark Rift. Then we have different factions that we're going to see in a minute. So it's time to choose your faction. We have the Empire. We have the Space Pirates. We have the robots that used to be slaves and they have rebel against their creators. Then we have the celestial, which are powerful beings made out of light. We have the space demons that they are corrupt beings that drive to the dark rift. And we have the good, we have the bad, and we have the ugly. Those are the arch. The, these are creatures that uh, consume everything on its path. So it's time to choose the commander for the game. And there's many different commanders that you can choose from. Every commander has a set of three unique skills. And it's basically part of the faction and part of the metaverse. Now it's, it's time to choose your fleet. So you, you choose a set of spaceships in the game. You're gonna have a different, you already have like this game is live. So you have a different set of spaceships that you can choose and you send it into the battleground. You can have different uh, game modes for multiplayer playing against artificial intelligence and uh, many different modes that we'll take a look at it later. This is how the game looks. Uh, you basically send spaceships into the battleground. The spaceships are gonna move against the enemy base and that's it. It's a strategy game. We can take a look at it like chess, but in real time where there's no turns. Like every player has to make like decisions in the moment. And we've been building this for a long time, seven years now. Uh, I've been bootstrapping with my friends, my developers, and this is what we do. We're gamers and we love it. Now let's take a look at the numbers, the market research. So the US, of course, is the number one market for the gaming industry. We have China that just got into the second place after Japan. Uh, we have South Korea. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, and then more uh, growing countries, growing economies that we, uh, we, we're looking into it. The game is translated and 12 different languages already. So we're looking to expand into different areas. Now the trending uh, right now is the hyper casual games. So people spend their time playing like games easy to play. And that's where we wanna be. We wanna have a, an easy game that it's super fast. You can get a game in 15 seconds, 30 seconds, finish your game and just start over. So that's that's the name of the game. Uh, the market platform, we're looking to be multi-platform, being in consoles, mobile gaming, web platform. Right now we're in the browser uh, industry, which is 2.3 billion, but the market is huge. Yes. And it's just gonna grow over time. Uh, now this is a strategy game. So the market the market size is uh, $16.3 billion. So that's that's the market opportunity. And this is just for the mobile uh, segment. So 
there's uh, there's other markets that we can explore. But this is our competition analysis. So I've been building this for a long time, and this is the, what I've been specializing into. Uh, we have uh, it's a strategy game. It's mobile. It's crypto. It's free to play, play and it's AAA. So the, the the game looks amazing, and we're looking into uh, get a, a, a partnerships so we can publish the game with a big publisher. The demographics is we have uh, teenagers and young adults. Um, basically out of the range right now. I'm 37 years old, so I'm not going to be wasting my time playing my game. I'm just going to focus on developing the game. And yeah, there's a wide variety of, of players we can get from. Uh, casual gamers, uh, students, uh, professors. Uh, the strategy games are about critical thinking. So these kind of games make people feel smart and actually uh, helps with the development of the brain. Now, the go-to-market strategy, uh, we just started last Friday with the open beta. We're, we're going to be for at least six months or a year. We're going to uh, test the game, add the new features, get the game ready for the market. Then we're going to launch. So the game is ready. The game is ready. We've been working for a long time. And when we launch, we're going to spend all this money into advertising. We're going to do marketing. Uh, that's that's what the money is for. And then we're going to try to get as much money as possible out of the game. So we're going to have expansions. We're going to have new spaceships, new characters, new metaverses to explore. And that's the roadmap. So all I ask you is one year to get the game ready for the market. And then we can go mobile. We can go to console, PlayStation, Xbox, uh, Nintendo, and then we can uh, go for a DAO, like a, a like a decentralized organization. Thank you so much, Omar. Okay. Thanks, Radu. So I'm Tommy. I'm from BoomDAO, and we are the DAO for all ICP games. We're focused on building gaming infrastructure that are that's focused purely on fully on-chain games, which is uniquely possible on the internet computer. So the problem that we're trying to solve here is that ICP games and Web3 games in general really struggle to build fully on chain. 99% of the Web3 games that you guys know about are running on, on Amazon Web Services and Google. And so what we're trying to do is how do we take these proprietary backends and databases that are on Amazon and Google and run them entirely on smart contracts on the internet computer blockchain. So what we built is infrastructure that has never existed before on any blockchain, and it can basically hold the entire game server, backend, database, entirely in ICP smart contracts. And so this on-chain gaming protocol that we've created, you could imagine it as one game server for all the games in the world. And so every game in the world can store their data in this one database that's held on the internet computer blockchain. And so why did we choose ICP? Well, because no other blockchain has these capabilities. And these are all you know technical jargon, but essentially, if you look at any of the stats of another blockchain, they can't store the amount of data that the ICP smart contracts can. And the reverse gas fee model of the ICP blockchain is really unique uh, and it creates an amazing UX for players. So let's show you guys some of the stuff that we built. I'm gonna show you real quick, this is the Game Launcher website. And from this Game Launcher website, uh, game developers can basically click one button to upload their game client build to a smart contract on the internet computer blockchain, one click. And uh, they can also deploy NFTs and ICRC, ICRC tokens uh, on the internet computer blockchain with one click as well. And the coolest part is that all these games are then showcased, all the games and smart contracts are showcased on the website. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this as well. This is kind of a, a technical graph, so don't, you don't need to pay too much attention to it. But basically what this is showing is that all the data of all these different games that are connected to this protocol can essentially carry their data from game to game. So a user connecting to this protocol essentially can you know, have a sword or, or have an item in this game, and this game can read the data of that game. And so it can know basically that the user has all these achievements in this other game because all that data is in smart contracts. So it's an entirely new level of composability because all the game data is inside of smart contracts, never before done on any other blockchain. 
And so this is a demo game that we've created to showcase all of this, obviously, because you want to see how it works. So this is a game that we use free assets. You know, these are open source assets. And so anyone can take this game, mod it, extend it, build on top of it. But this is essentially like a base world, you can imagine. And in this base world, you have these creatures that you can fight. Uh, every time you fight a creature, you'll see that this little counter goes up a little bit. And that's tracking how many blockchain transactions are happening. So you see there's five transactions that have happened so far. Uh, when you open a treasure chest in the game, it's also a blockchain transaction. And so that's doing you know, a, basically a, a calculation in a smart contract to see what item should be dropped because it's a random item that's being dropped. Um, and then you'll see you have an inventory. These are all the items that are recorded uh, on the blockchain in your data. And I'm going to show you guys real quick this a bunch of boring stuff here, but this is basically the smart contract itself. So you can literally go to the smart contract and interact with it directly. And you can see you have 14 bones, you have two ores, you have one wood. And so basically all this stuff, not just NFTs, not just tokens, but literally everything in this game, the checkpoints, the spawn points, you know, your progress in the game, the achievements that you have in the game, your username, all of it's stored completely on the blockchain. And even uh, what's cooler about this is that you can actually set the rules of the game entirely in the blockchain. So anyone can create a, a client that interacts with the smart contract. So the game that I just showed you just now, it's just one client. But someone else could create a 2D game. Someone else could create a command line interface. Someone could create a game about you know fighting dragons or something. And they could interact with this smart contract. And so this is basically the game itself is inside of this smart contract. So I want to talk a little bit about the tokenomics around this protocol that I've been mentioning earlier. So we have this protocol that's essentially you know this game protocol for all the games in the world. And so how does that how does that accrue value, right? So you have uh, these boom tokens that are basically used at a protocol level similar to how cycles are used on the internet computer. So they're used for computation, storage, and interoperability between different games. And so when uh, a developer is reading the data of another game or writing data to another game uh, or importing data between different worlds, uh, they're basically using this token to, to burn to use as a, a way to pay for, for uh, the computation and, and storage. And so we also have our roadmap here. Uh, you'll see that we have some really, really awesome stuff on, on our roadmap for gaming guilds, for on-chain multiplayer. So we'll have fully on-chain multiplayer, which also has never been accomplished on a blockchain before. Uh, but on the internet computer, because the full stack is on-chain, it's amazing. You can build a multiplayer game, have people you know, being simulated in real time with each other and interacting with each other fully on the blockchain. And lastly, I'm going to mention that we have currently our SNS sale open. And so what an SNS is, is basically it's a, the centralized swap, and it's something that's uniquely possible in the internet computer. So a decentralized swap is essentially uh, basically you can participate, and then you can be a token holder who governs a DAO fully on the blockchain. So this is not possible on Ethereum or any other blockchain. It's only possible on the internet computer, and you can basically govern the protocol that I just mentioned earlier entirely on the blockchain by being a token holder. So this is open for two more days, and uh, if you want to participate, you can also talk to me in the back. I'll be in. Hi everyone, I'm George and I'm the founder of Unfold VR. Unfold VR aims to be a spatial, the spatial creator hub. But what does this mean? What is spatial computing? We're talking about what I call the new interactive creator economy, which is basically an assembly of apps and platforms where user can, users can create or modify content, where they can create or modify experiences, where essentially they are participating actively in telling the story of that platform or experience. And you have creation tools and platforms alike. And the problem with this is actually in the title, it's very new. So as with any new ecosystem, it's very fragmented. And unfortunately, it's also very closed at the moment. Everybody's trying to capture in as much value within their world garden. And this makes it very hard for new users to join in the new creator economy. So the solution is to build a set of infrastructure tool that directly aims to lower the barrier of entry to, for creators to, to join this new creator economy. And this has to be an open and decentralized system where you have interoperability at the core and where you use 3D NFTs as the building blocks. Now, why is this uh, relevant now and why on NCP? Well, now is definitely the best time to invest in spatial computing one year from now, two years from now, it's going to be too late. And we can talk more about this on our booth over there. 
with a bunch of numbers and, and real life examples. And for us, ICP, beyond all the reasons that were mentioned before, is important because it allows the, all the blockchain aspects to be as transparent as possible for the end user. Because the end user is the Web2 user. The end user is not the Web3 user. Uh, we need to bring that community over. The market is definitely big enough. And again, we can go over all the statistics uh, on, on why VR and why spatial computing and why real-time um, assets are, are going to push um, this new creator economy forward. There's ample competition, and some of these projects are more open, some are more closed. But what's a, a critical element across almost all of them is that they don't talk to each other. So it's very hard for creators to kind of build a story across all of these and, and gather an audience because they have to do a lot of manual work. And this is where our product comes in, Unfold VR. With Unfold VR, we create a singular place where you can not only just create content by drawing in VR or drawing 3D on the web, but you can engage your community, you can share, discover content. Uh, everything is open, everything is interoperable, so we play nice with user-generated platforms and digital content creation tools. And all the interactions that are happening are recorded in 3D NFT metadata. So this creates us a big opportunity for us to have a vast library of user curated 3D assets that are VR ready and web ready. Right now we have fully live VR and web apps that are fully functional. You can try them over there. Uh, and we actually invite you after, the, after all the talks to, to come and give it a go. Uh, and we're focusing right now on our go-to-market strategy and we're aiming to have over 10K active users in Q1 2024. Uh, our tokenomics, we see tokenomics in the short term as a fundraising tool. Uh, we have NFTs as the core of Unfold VR, but in the long term, we are very open to having a DAO where we reward active creators with, with a significant percentage of, of uh, DAO allocation. We are a battle-tested team, as I said there, uh, uh, we have a lot of experience in the VR system. We, we've been rewarded with three Definica grants for all the technical work that we did for the ecosystem. And by far, I think we are the best team to execute on this vision. And we can discuss more about that on our booth and, and share more about uh, the team. We're aiming to raise 1 million at a 10 million pre-money pre valuation uh, with the funding going towards increasing the team and executing go-to-market strategy. And we can discuss again more about this uh, in our booth. And I really, really invite you to come and try our app. VR is a sensorial experience. And you have to try it to really understand the potential of it. And the fact that we've built it as cross-platform means you don't need a VR headset to use it. So we can engage more users. But the VR is the best way to experience Unfold VR. And we're also very open to all the other platforms um, and projects on the IC to kind of build this ecosystem uh, with, with our tools and, and their uh, platforms. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Stoll, actually. Thank you. There we go. No, it's not Mariana. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's not break anything. So I am the leader of Inside Dark Studio. We are a dynamic studio working with the community, our driving goal is to actually build everything with, with the community. So um, uh, we have a lot of partnerships in the middle. And this has been one of our strategies to survive this uh, this market. What challenge we, we face right now is user onboarding to, to Web3. Obviously, this is a topic everyone spoke already. Uh, we, we believe we have the key to actually have the bridging between 2.0 and 2.3. Obviously, we are working on centralized on uh, breaking the centralization. The centralized. I'm sorry. I I'm kind of nervous. This is my first time. Um, yes. Thank you so much, guys. Anyway, so yeah, we we are fighting the, the same problems everyone is fighting in, in this, um, and we have our strategy to work on on those. Right, as uh, I, I believe it was Kubetopia that send you guys to, to our game. We have the same kind of deal. We believe that that's going to be a good strategy to adopt users. We are working together with a lot of partners like Panini, like, like Hasbro, and another of the big ones, right? 
uh, our idea is to to go empower the the ownership and freedom and we believe in ethical free to play games um what's an ethical free to play game everything in the game doesn't affect the the gameplay it's only affect how the players look so this gives us an opportunity to actually don't give the pay to win experience to games and <clears throat> this is very important because gamers don't like this experience so we are attracting a lot of target with this right our team consists of 26 persons right now right now you can see the the leadership of, of our team obviously it's me francisca morales uh, a really good psychologist um, that is doing our recruitment uh, mohammed Admet, he is our CTO. We have Barry, he's our CRO. We have uh, Fabian Pellegrini, he's a very influenced uh, person in, in Chile. Uh, we have Greg, Matthew, uh, and a few others, right? Um, our competition right now, uh, we are aiming to, to kind of web two competition. Like, since we have a lot of pro or projects in, in the roadmap, we have around 13 gaming projects and seven projects that are not gamers. Uh, we point to kind of the similar type of deal of business, right? So, so for example, we have uh, UFO Gaming, we have Gala Gaming, we have Activision, we have Riot Games, our target. So this is something I would like actually Barry to, to speak with me here. Um, our target of of um, of player basically is the the merchant markets, right? And that's why we design our games to be fully on browser and fully on chain. Um, this is because we want anyone with a toaster to actually run a game, right? Exactly that. So um, our target at IDS. So IDS is not a game. It's not a metaverse. It's a studio that creates games and metaverses. So that was one of the things that attracted me to IDS. Now, as um, Stowe mentioned, it's all about the emerging markets for us. Hence why we built the technology in the way that we've built it. We built it on web browsers, right? So using your mobile phone with not much connectivity, with not the best phone, you can have the, a great experience on the internet computer. And this is what Stowe was actually getting into. And one of our main targets is actually, you know, Africa, etc. cetera. Um, moving forward quickly, it's all about partnerships. Now, some of you may know me as the CEO founder of Can I Store. What's the, re what's the relevance here? So at Can I Store, the next, sli um, next slide, what we've done is we've built a 100% on-chain broadcast station. What is the relevance here within gaming? Now, Stoll has built an API that connects the broadcast station to games on Unity and Unreal Engine. So now gaming developers can use our API and have a music experience, right? The users can actually stream the broadcast station, which is 100% on chain and select a playlist, right? Um, further to that, developers can now actually license sounds and music directly from the internet computer and can I store to actually license and use within their games, right? So a lot of the strategy moving forward has been to build the best games and metaverses on the internet computer. Now, can I store is one of them. I already explained about connecting the music onto the games, we also are developing Ride, which is a fully on-chain Uber, right? That's amazing, that's coming. Chain ID, which is all about your ID and protecting your data, and a few others. Now, that's the strategy moving forward, is about the partnerships, right? It's about coming together and building on the internet computer. And this is what attracted me to IDS, and this is our main marketing strategy moving forward in the beginning is to just build out cool stuff on the internet computer. So one last thing I want to get back to. So in, in the last year, we have one year. This is actually our anniversary, by the way. Um, we have built six games, right? From our own universe, Reality of Magnus, that's called Rome Universe, how internally, we have built a MOBA, an FPS, and a Dungeon Crawler. From others' partners, DSA, DSA is kind of a starship exploration 
kind of deal game. Then Boxy War is the same deal, but in, a, in a, an entire war. And then we have Pocket Studio Delta City, right? So those are some of the uh, games we have in demo right now that I invite everyone to try in, in our booth back then. Um, and I don't know if you want to add anything else, sorry. Okay, they could me down. Thank you very much, guys. Yes. Thanks. So that was the entire cohort of ICP Lab 5. So I guess we would, we should give them another round of applause for, for all the cool stuff that is being built.